G'day folks, Les from Calandra Marine. Today I've got Gary here from Blue Sky Alliance. Gary, welcome. What Thanks. is Blue Sky Alliance, mate? Blue Sky Alliance is just uh, the industry body of uh, most, 97% of the small engine manufacturers who got together to organise these emission regulations with government, make sure they're practical. So you're monitoring it, you're analysing it, or you're actually enforcing it? What part are you involved in there? Okay, the government's had plans for 11 years to have emission regulations for small engines, everything from chainsaws to outboards. Um, and uh, we've been monitoring it, working with them. Last week I took them around to see some companies and some factories, that kind of thing. So we're trying to keep it practical, so are they, and it's been good. Oh, that's great. Okay, so, well, you can probably help us out here because, um, as you're probably aware, we're an Evernote E-Tech dealer, and um, the biggest I suppose customer inquiry we get is, well, if I buy one of these e-techs, they're not a four-stroke, what am I going to do when these new regulations come in? The first thing to remember is the regulations aren't a ban on anything, to any technology, not on a four-stroke, not on a two-stroke, they're emission standards. We've had standards on cars since the 1970s, now we're putting standards on small engines. We've, we've, uh, we're going to have an emission standard, things that pass the standard will be able to be sold, things that don't pass the standard can't be sold. Um, E-Tech is cleaner as four-stroke, usually cleaner on the main emissions and, and usually way cleaner on the carbon monoxide. So, you know, yeah. they're not going to be banned or anything close to it. If any, they're all going to pass. Okay, so you mentioned carbon monoxide, how the E-Tech has really substantially low there. I've sort of heard a bit of a rumour that over in the States they're focusing on carbon monoxide levels now. They've sort of got the emissions laws all under process over there and working fine and now they're targeting carbon monoxide because in a lot of these cabin boats obviously with outboards running and motors running that there's a risk of people actually dying from carbon monoxide fumes. Is this something we think we'll see down the track in Australia as well? Will we follow their lead or? Yeah well we are following their lead. Um, the US had uh, hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides for years so as Europe in fact 20 years ago they started on that in the USA. Um, carbon monoxide came in about three years ago, so part of the standard is, is two tests, one on HC and NOx, one on CO, carbon yeah. monoxide, so that's already in the standard. Europe's matched their standard last year, and Australia's going to match that standard too. But uh, uh, boating authority, the Boating Industry Association and uh, uh, Maritime Safety in New South Wales have put out warnings about not having any closed cabin or those covers yeah. and an engine running. Um, same as when a barbecue on a boat, but you've got to be careful of fumes as well. And yeah. There's been sad cases in the US and I'm glad these standards are coming in because it's a safety standard as much as mm -hmm. it is a pollution standard. Mm -hmm. Okay Gary, so you seem very passionate about this, so what got you into this? Uh, look, um, divorce and a young kid and the thing we had together was fishing, so that was great. Yeah. Um, tried the fishing competitions, didn't do any good at all, but had a ball, loved mm -hmm. it. Uh, the ribbon bass comps, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Lake Lenthal's, they were going to close it down to anything more than six horsepower. But that was crazy because a six horsepower has got more pollution than a 120 horsepower four stroke. So that was wrong. So I said, that didn't make sense to me. So I battled that one. Grew from there to, to, a, to a job doing doing this role. But, uh, yeah. um, and running some bass and brim comps uh, over the summer series. Oh, that's good. So you're like very into freshwater fishing, obviously. So, and that's their more regulated areas and have been for years than out in the ocean, so. Well, yeah. I, lit, I lit the fuse on, on Wyvernhoe. Wyvernhoe was uh, sailing boats and electric only. I lit the fuse on that opening up. Now Wyvernhoe's opened up to clean engines. So mm. we're getting more fishing areas. Yeah, well, it's, so you've achieved something for the whole baiting community, regardless of people are gonna say, well, he's the bloke that's gonna make me get rid of my old motor. You're the bloke that's actually now opened up a, a broader, yeah, and we've done the same in South Australia and some in Tasmania as well. So I'm opening up fishing areas, we believe. Oh. And but nothing people own now is going to be banned. It's just a case of after this time, you can only buy clean engines. It's already, they're already half the market. Thanks, Gary. I think this has answered all the tough questions out there. And um, I mean, the main thing is, so you're telling me and we're telling everyone, if you buy an E-Tech engine, it's not going to be banned. No. Um, Les, I bought an E-Tech five years ago. I'm not, I don't need to trade it in, it's working fine. I'll buy another one tomorrow. Oh, well, that's great to know. That's even better. Thanks, Gary. Cheers, mate. G'day, Les here. Just finishing off another deal. Do you like our YouTube videos? Well, hit the subscribe button. You know that subscribe button there? You'll become part of the family of Calandra Marine 
and get given the latest opportunity to watch our YouTube videos as they become available. So get behind us, we get behind you, hit subscribe.